7th of January, 2017. There were actually two different aircraft involved Emirates Airbus A380 and Bombardier Challenger 604. But the aircraft that we're going to spend most of our time focusing on is a Bombardier Challenger 604. That's a beautiful business jet aircraft with two rear-mounted engines. The aircraft's operator at the time was MHS Aviation. And it was flying from Mao's Valana International Airport in the Maldives to Abu Dhabi's Al Batin Executive Airport in the UAE. The aircraft was configured to take a maximum of 10 passengers. But on the accident day it was carrying only six. In charge of the bombardier yet was a 39-year-old captain with little over 5,300 hours of total time. The majority of which had been flown on this particular type. He was flying together with a 41-year-old first officer who had around 1,500 hours of total time and about 1,000 hours on this type. The other aircraft Emirates Airbus A380. A performing flight from Dubai to Sydney, Australia. At the time of the accident this aircraft waved about 523 tons, and that's going to become an important fact in what's about to happen. The Bombardier crew started their duty and fly over towards Al Batin in the United Arab Emirates. The pilots started saw that the weather at their departure airport was absolutely beautiful. And the same went for their destination airport. They started looking into the significant weather chart along their route to see if there was any clear air turbulence or anything like that forecasted this is a standard thing that always do during pre-flight preparation. It is normally associated with things like jet streams that fast moving air and where the jet streams rub up against slower moving air. It creates these small vortices that we will feel like turbulence. It can also happen in the boundary layers between different air masses or over mountain ranges. In this case there was no forecast of any clear air turbulence along the route. This was happening the crew of the Airbus A380 was doing almost exactly the same job over in their crew room in Dubai. They were planning a flight between Dubai and Sydney and it looked like it was going to be almost fully loaded. Which meant that they were going to be very heavy. And because they were so heavy they had been planned to have an intermediate cruising altitude of flight level 350. That's about 35,000 feet. They were proceeding down towards Sydney enabling them to climb higher. 10.55 local time. The Emirates A380 takes off from Dubai International Airport. Challenger CL604 took off from runway 36 in Malay and started climbing towards their destination. The captain was pilot flying for the flight and he engaged the autopilot about one minute into the flight and the outer pilot stayed engaged all the way up until the accident. About 28 minutes after departure the aircraft had reached its cruising altitude of 34,000 feet. And about 9 minutes after that they crossed into the Mumbai range and got into contact with Mumbai air traffic controllers. They cleared them to continue following the Lima 984 airway up to an Arnhem point called Ketel according to their flight plan. Almost at the same time only two minutes apart the Airbus A380 took off from Dubai and started climbing up to their cruising altitude of flight level 350. In the opposite direction aircrafts are generally assigned their cruising levels based on something called the half circle rule. This rule states that aircraft that are traveling in a predominantly westerly direction will be getting even flight levels so flight with 320 flats for 340 and 360 and so on. In aircraft that are traveling on an easterly route they will be getting the odd level so flight over 310, 330, 350 and so on. In RVSM airspace aircraft are allowed to get as close to each other as 1000 feet vertically. When they meet each other RVSM airspace generally starts at flight level 280 and above. And in order for an aircraft to be allowed to fly in that type of airspace, it's very common for pilots to see other aircraft that close to each other. So 1000 feet is about 300 meters and because the navigational equipments are generally so accurate now, it is also very common that we cross the same RNAV points at only 1,000 feet difference vertically. 
and almost identically the same point horizontally and that is also going to have an impact on what's about to happen next. After 1 hours 35 minutes later over the Arabian Sea. Time 2.08 PM. The captain of the bombardier aircraft looked down onto his navigation display and saw that there was oncoming traffic 1,000 feet above them. Within a few minutes both him and the first officer recognized the Airbus A380 that was coming in the opposite direction. And it's likely that they didn't think much of this in fact it's more than likely that they thought it was pretty cool to see this giant and majestic aircraft coming in such relative proximity. The giant Airbus A380 passed almost exactly overhead the bombardier just slightly to the left and with a vertical separation of exactly 1,000 feet. Initially everything looked normal but about one minute after the Airbus had crossed overhead. The wake turbulence hit this was initially felt like a light shrubber in the aircraft. And then it started to roll slightly to the right. Before it made a snap roll towards the left. That immediately disconnected the autopilot. The aircraft pitched up to 9 degrees that would have made the crew and the passengers feel like they were pushed down slightly into their seats. And then as the attitude changed from plus 9 to minus 20 degrees as part of the roll. That would have made anything that wasn't strapped down including crew and the passengers being thrown into the ceiling of the aircraft. Luckily both pilots were wearing their seat belts so they were strapped down. The first officer even had his shoulder harness. On but several other items in the cockpit including the quick reference handbook got thrown into the ceiling where it broke and strewed non-normal checklist pages all over the cockpit. As the aircraft now rolled three times around its longitudinal axis and hurled down towards the sea below. The passengers got thrown straight up into the ceiling of the aircraft. And then as the aircraft started to roll they were thrown into the floor and into the seats. Basically the back of the cabin became like the inside of a giant washing machine. In the cockpit things were now starting to get even more serious. As the quick roll had caused both inertial reference systems to malfunction. These systems provided the primary flight displays of the pilots with their altitude information. Meaning that the pilots now didn't have anything to show them what was up and down except for the standby instrumentation and what they could see outside of the window. But of course outside of the window there was blue sky and blue sea and knowing which was very hard in this situation. As this was happening the speed went up to 330 knots which is above the maximum. Speed that the aircraft was certified for which is 318 knots. The palace were now doing everything they could to get the aircraft out off the roll and the unusual attitude and back onto the right keel again. The captain now looked down onto his engine instrumentation. He saw that there was a big split with AN1 that was steadily reducing. And then two that was slightly higher but an inter-turbine temperature as a temperature inside of the engine rising rapidly up to over a thousand degrees and it was blinking red. Because of this the pilots decided to immediately shut down engine number one. To try to preserve it and make sure that it didn't get damaged. Now they were flying at 24,000 feet with only one engine but at least they had the aircraft under control. They needed to land as soon as possible the pilots now discussed that. But the problem was that they were still out of the sea miles away from any land. But they looked at all of the different options they had and decided that they were going to divert towards Muscat. They informed their traffic control and then started heading straight towards Muscat Airport. Which was about 1 hour and 25 minutes away. The bombardier aircraft landed safely in Muscat. There they were met by ambulances who took 4 out of the 6 passengers directly to hospital. Where it was found that several of them had suffered things. Like broken ribs they were bloody broken. Noses one had a broken vertebrae as well. As other minor injuries the two pilots. And two of the passengers were unharmed. And the cabin crew had received minor injuries. The aircraft was evaluated by representatives of the aircraft manufacturer Bombardier. And they decided that because it had been subjected to so many structural exceedances. During this event it would not be possible to restore the aircraft to a flyable. The Airbus A380 and its crew was blissfully unaware of this accident happening. 
so they just continued their flight down towards Sydney where they landed uneventfully.